You gotta be fast. You gotta be fit. You gotta be tough. It's a sport for men. And a sport for women. It's a family sport. With passionate fans from around the world. It's all of that and much more. This is Rugby Sevens Worldwide. Welcome to Rugby Sevens Worldwide, a new series on CNN as we immerse ourselves in this growing and fast-paced sport. The sport, for both men and women, is set to make its Olympic debut in Rio in three years' time. And we'll tell you all you need to know about one of the world's fastest growing games. Starting on Australia's Gold Coast, the Sevens World Series has nine global venues, the second tournament is in Dubai before the action moves on to Port Elizabeth in South Africa. Las Vegas is the host city for the United States leg, then the next stop is across the Pacific Ocean to New Zealand before the short hop to Asia for tournaments in Japan and Hong Kong. The climax to the series is in the UK with rounds in Scotland and England with the so-called home of rugby, London's Twickenham Stadium, staging the final event in May 2014. Dubai is one of the most colourful stopping points in the series, where up to 50,000 fans turn out for a three-day party in the desert to enjoy the sport they love. We're the Kenyans, man. Yeah. Come to take this thing. Alongside the international sides, the grassroots of the sport is represented by an invitation tournament comprising some 200 teams. Altogether, more than 3,000 players are taking part. But the desert of Dubai is just one step on the long road to Rio, which actually began 130 years ago in a small Scottish town. This is Melrose. This is the Green Yards, the home of Melrose Rugby Club. Founders of Rugby Sevens in 1883, where on this very pitch, the very first Rugby Sevens tournament was played. In the early days, the club was short of money, as many rugby clubs were, and the idea credited to the late Ned Haig was to run a football tournament with several teams taking part in the one afternoon with a reduced number of players. So the, the seven-a-side game w was developed from there. The first sevens I was at was 1934 and I've been at 73 of them since. My wife thinks I live here and occasionally go home to bed. If you mention the name Melrose anywhere, certainly in the Western world, they will have heard of it and it's primarily down to the fact that Rugby Sevens was founded here in 1883. Certainly from 1993, since that first Rugby World Cup Sevens, you know, it's really been taken on board, not just by the traditional rugby playing countries, but also by countries all over the world. And it truly is a global game. Well, it's, it's quite ironic, really, because the first tournament I ever won as a, as a Sevens coach was I won the Melrose Sevens. My first Commonwealth Games was in 98, which was in Kuala Lumpur. And to me, if I look at memories, seeing a player being presented with a, with a gold medal to the, to the raising of your flag and to listening to your anthem, there's nothing better than that. And I've been lucky enough to be in four Commonwealth Games now and, and of course there's going to be a fifth now. The IRB first presented their case to the IOC but they were lobbying just for the men to be included in the Olympics and then the IOC were pushing for equality in sport, which was great because that meant that then the women had to be included. So that's where I came in because Australia had won a 2009 World Cup, the first ever Women's World Cup, and they needed a woman uh, to represent all female players and, and speak about you know, my experience winning a World Cup and what it would mean to win an Olympic gold medal. 
The Olympics has generated so much interest right around the world. I mean, the sevens game is growing. Globally, it's just growing with every tournament that we have and uh, the excitement. And I think the reason it's grown so much is it's not about one or two teams now where it used to be New Zealand, Fiji. There's now six or seven teams that could win any tournament, and that's what's made the sport so popular. For these young guys coming through, you know, what an incentive. You know, if they can, you know, get to grips, uh, firmer place up there, you know, I could be playing for, you know, one of the, the, the biggest honours in, in, in sport, so a gold medal. We're seeing countries that we've never imagined rugby, like Brazil, like China, like Russia, uh, like Spain, who are incredibly competitive and, and give all of the more traditional marks a run for their money, in many cases, beat them. Of course, also, we're seeing the women coming on very strong too. So it, it, it's globalising a sport, sevens and fifteens. The potential's huge. Uh, one, because it's an exciting game, but two, um, it, the, the game, the sevens game goes to great countries that, that where rugby isn't a stronghold. It goes to Russia, it goes to Uruguay, Hong Kong, here in Dubai. Uh, it's really taking the game to the world. And now that there's uh, Olympic gold medals on offer, it's only going to get stronger. Oh, oh, oh. Huh? Good, bring, good, well done. Part of the beauty of it is the huge amount of investment and time spent at grassroots level around where the Seven Series takes place and in particular in Dubai and Abu Dhabi in and around the local Emirati children to introduce them to the game of rugby. Obviously uh, all of us like the tackling part because you know it's nice to put someone down on the ground and stuff and yeah I love the when we change quick directions and stuff but tackling is number one. Uh, I like the fake passes and uh, running as fast as you can to the other end and uh, mostly the tackling part. Yeah. Brilliant! To see the children running around here today with such big smiles on their faces trying the sport that most of them have never tried before gives you a particularly strong foundation from which you can then build and I think if you're trying to take a World 7 Series to different cities around the world you've got to get the local community buying into it and loving the sport. After the break, we'll give you a whistle-stop guide to the game and I'll find out what it's like to take on an international rugby star in a one-on-one -on -one challenge. Good art! Yes! For those of you new to Rugby Sevens, we've designed a handy but light-hearted explainer on the finer points of the game. Rugby Union is traditionally a battle slugged out between 30 players over the course of 80 minutes. Rugby Sevens is somewhat different, and the clue's in the name. To convert Rugby to Rugby Sevens, you just dump the eight slowest members of the team, leaving just seven players on each side. Doing that transforms the shape of the average player from this to this. These superhuman athletes then have twice as much space in which to run around until they're totally exhausted. That usually takes just seven minutes, so we give them a one minute break for a breather and change of ends, and then it's on with a lung busting action. The game has managed to pack in the same amount of excitement from an 80 minute game into just 15 minutes. That's because there's less of this and a lot less of this, and a lot more of this. All of which means the scoreboard keeps turning and the fans keep cheering. The rest's the same, five points for a try, two for a conversion, and a ball which looks like it's been sat on by an elephant. It's a game for men and women, but not usually within the same team. Oh yes, and a note for our American viewers, there'll be absolutely none of this. The different rules, the shorter games, the leaner athletes, all make sevens a faster version of rugby than the 15 a side game. And it all means more action per minute. <coughs> but don't take my word for it, hear what some of the best in the business have to say about their sport. <coughs> I love it because the, uh, the players get an opportunity to express themselves in pace. You know, you see all the skill sets, the acceleration, the, the pace, um, the the vision, the passing skills. It's the pace of the game, I mean, it's a pretty fast game, you know, there's not a lot of time like 15, so you've got to be on your game, um, every game I suppose, and you just got to execute under pressure. Sevens is a, it's a more fast game obviously, and it's 
easier to, to understand the, the rules or the way to play and to introduce to new country or to new some players where the rugby is not playing, it's a very good way to, to introduce the rugby in some country. You know, I was lucky enough to, to be given an opportunity to springboard my career from sevens. Uh, Christian Cullen, Jonah Lomu, you know, so many players started playing, um, you know, the game at seven aside level and really gives you the opportunity to test your skills against the very best in the world. Yeah, they want to see fast rugby, they want to see um, guys running with a ball and I suppose that's why I love sevens as well because my game, although I played in the 15s um, and, and rugby league uh, for most of my career, you know, my, the way I played the game was almost like sevens. I love the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the wider spaces, just so you can express yourself. It's all about that one-on-one -on -one, um, contact. It's about uh, beating the man. Uh, you know, it's an incredibly um, anaerobic and intense sport. Um, but I think they are diverging. Less and less will, will we see 15s players swapping over sevens and being able to make it. I've just my jaws dropped in terms of the quality of the athletes that are here playing sevens. It's it's quite exceptional. As a coach, oh look, I'm yeah. I, I, I often say to people, uh, you never see my job advertised, uh, and I love doing what I do. I love working with these young players. They're all highly motivated and good kids too. They're really a pleasure to, to coach, and I love the whole uh, competition. The fact that we're travelling together is a, it's a little bit bit of a throwback to rugby when I played. You know, you travel and stay in the in the same hotel as your opposition. Uh, you sort of respect them off the field, but you are quite. You know, the games are quite ferocious uh, on the field and uh, I like that aspect of it. Alongside the international teams competing in the Rugby Sevens World Series, this invitational tournament here in Dubai comprises 3,000 players ranging from local women's and youth sides to a cast of former international rugby stars representing clubs and charities. The veterans team, representing the Christina Noble Children's Foundation, have the best record in the tournament, while raising $3 million for the charity along the way. Yes! Set! Yes! I went along to a training session to pick up some tactical tips. Women joined on the training field by Elvis Sebiali'i. He's a Samoan international who played 36 times for his country and also for a handful of English Premier League clubs, even at the ground old age of 35 on the books of London Wasps, Elvis, which isn't too dusty. And I'm going to fling you the ball because you're going to teach us some skills on the Rugby Sevens field. How did you see it as a centre? Were you just looking to hit the right line or were you looking to beat a person one-on-one -on -one with a dummy or with a feint? Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much it's up to whatever you see in front of you. You see an opportunity to go uh, down the middle and there's a gap, you take it. If not, then you sort of just back yourself and have a go. Um, and that's sort of pushing them away, taking them on the inside or try and uh, get on the outside but sort of uh, stand them up as they say sort of get them flat-footed and having a go on the outside. So. Okay, well let's see you do it. Let's set up a really simple training test so Elvis can show us what he can do. He's going to be on the try line, running away from it towards me. He's just got to get around me. We're in the channel here between the touch line and the five metre line. And let's see if Elvis can do Alex Thomas of CNN. <laughs> I think he's going to be in difficulties here. Okay, Elvis. <laughs> I'm ready. him that time he just turned on a dime it's ridiculous man that's good <laughs> hey, i appreciate it thanks, thanks for your time no, that's all right. i barely had time to reflect on the rugby lesson elvis had given me when i was besieged by around 200 young players who had turned up for weekly training this was my opportunity to go back to basics and put in some much needed work on my core skills and fitness well, after all that, I need to take a break and get my breath back. But when we return, I'll tell you how Rugby Sevens is breaking down sporting barriers across the world.
While the men will compete in nine tournaments in the Sevens World Series, the women have five events of their own beginning in Dubai before travelling to China, Brazil, the US and the Netherlands. Here too, the emphasis on speed and fitness is apparent at the team's training sessions. Established sides, such as New Zealand, provide the benchmark pursued by developing rugby nations like Tunisia, which can now boast as many as 6,000 female rugby players. يعني الحب اللي ما بين البنات لما الحلوة يعني تحس البنات هكا سودية مع بعضنا ودي ما فهم الضحكة والجو هذيك أكثر حاجة حبتني في الركبي يعني وخلتني نواصل في حاجة هذيك مانو الركبي أسات سنسبور أولمبيك مانو من تونيزي مانو كل مانو نو فيز كم دي شامبيون كل مانو نوز أتان مانو ليجان على الاكسترية نوز أتان تسكاليفي على الأولمبياد de la zone de nous voir à Rio de Janeiro. Les filles ont, ils ont maintenant le champion d'Afrique, ils ont participé à la Coupe du Monde. Il ne faut, faut pas rater cette occasion-là d'aller à l'Olympiade, surtout de porter les t-shirts et les maillots de la Tunisie. C'est un grand, un grand, c'est une grande fierté. Yani, euh, je que je ne pas je ne pas je ne pas pas je يعني واحد فرحة مع مع يعني فرحة كبيرة للواحد من نفسه صفها ما فهم حتى إشكالية بالعكس ديما مشجعيني واقفين معايا يعني بلا أكثر وحيد اللي يمكن هما مشجعيني إني نواصل في الحاجة هذه هما الفاميم تاعي معناه الحمد لله. Few women have contributed as much to rugby as Cheryl McAfee. When you throw the ball, you want to keep your hands. Under her maiden name, Cheryl Soon, she led Australia to victory in the 2009 Sevens World Cup. She's the first woman director of Australia's Players Association and was a key part of the international team which persuaded the IOC to include rugby as an Olympic sport at Rio 2016. That's good. That's really good. Now located in the US, we caught up with her, passing on her experience to a new generation of women players in San Francisco. Well, I just want them to, to think that, you know, it's not a scary sport, um, it's not rough, and that it's a really fun game to play, um, and that if you pursue it, if you set your dreams and your goals, you know, it doesn't matter how high. Keep those hands up. And if you want to be an Olympian, you can do through playing the sport. And if you want to travel the world and experience different cultures and meet some lifelong friends and just travel and, and enjoy it, um, but, you know, this is the sport to do that. Now we're going to go from the base. So you should do those ones before you do the, the ones off the deck. It's changed since I played in 2009, the last World Cup. It's changed a lot since I went to the, the 2013 World Cup in Moscow this year and I witnessed some phenomenal talent, skill, pace, the physicality of these girls, the way they play their game, the vision, their ability to step and just, you know, outsmart their opponents. Uh, it, it was amazing. There are two players who illustrate above all others that Rugby Sevens is a game for men and women. They both play for England and their brother and sister. I think we're quite a standard competitive brother and sister, so anything he'd do, I'd try and do better. We uh, used to play across the landing at home whenever Mike wanted to try out his new steps or whatever, and that, uh, yeah, it didn't end well for me. I could show you several <laughs> scars and bruises from our upbringing. Our dad used to teach us, um, both of us, he's our, well, my rugby coach, and when Meg's played in year seven for a year, her rugby coach. So having a rug rugby mad family in a rugby mad town, contributed quite a bit to uh, sending up both rugby players. Uh, this is uh, Mike Gallery. So when I was a lot younger, when I used to spend most of my upbringing on the sidelines, uh, down at Penrith, watching him play here, there and everywhere, but watching him compete in the seven circuit, it's just such an exciting game, I really, really wanted to get involved, so went along to the open trial and here I am. 
in the corner. Yes, it is another try for England. This time, Megan Ellery. So she scores on her debut. I'm immensely proud of her. It's, um, especially as she's just started really playing properly about seven or eight months ago. She's um, picked up quite quickly. She obviously got quite a lot of natural uh, talent. So I'm very proud of her. So obviously for men and women, sevens is a hugely exciting game to be involved in at the moment. It's expanded pretty rapidly over the last couple of years, uh, particularly the women's game. And I think the fact that we're both here side by side in Dubai is testament to what a great game that sevens is on this whole circuit. I still can't believe that I'm out here. I was really hoping for this tournament because obviously it's the only one um, where the men and women are in the same place, so it's pretty cool to be here. Yay! One of the most unique aspects of Rugby Sevens is the festival atmosphere you get at every tournament. The atmosphere at a Sevens event is incredibly festive. It's, it tends to be a younger audience, tends to not be the typical rugby audience, so a lot of fun is had and it, of course it lasts over two or three days sometimes, so people have got to want to stay out for a long time and enjoy the fun. Your parents had it, there's nothing better than a, than a Sevens weekend because you've got Kiwis sat next to Welshmen, sat next to Irishmen, sat next to Aussies, uh, they're all enjoying each other's company, of course they're passionate about their country's winning, but at the end of the game they all get up and have a dance together, go for a hot dog and have a great time. Isn't it brilliant? It's as much about the party as it is about, uh, about the matches themselves and everyone gets into the spirit of it, everyone has a great time, um, but also everyone's in, you know, it, it's a community and it's, a, it's a, just a great feel, uh, you know, Dubai's up there with the you know the best rugby events on the calendar and uh, it's you can look around it's fantastic to see it all. We just want people to have fun these girls are all characters a lot of them are from musical theatre they're not just cheerleaders they're much more than that so we really want to bring in some characters onto the field so then it just the vibe goes through the whole stadium so everyone can just feel the fun and feel the characters. Outside of the field you know, the stands, I mean, you know, you've got all sorts going on. You've got people that are dressed up, you've got people, for example, this weekend that are involved in the invitation. I think there's over 3,000, you know, players that are involved in that, you know, that are playing in their own little tournament in and around what we're doing, you know. And then you've got, you know, the families that come in, you've got all the kids that are running around, all the ball boys, uh, you know, it's the men's, the women's element. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely crazy outside of the field. Then once you get into it, I mean, you've got 16 nations basically trying to tear each other apart, you know, and it's, it's a very clinical, executed, sort of piece to that but it's uh, it's one that's so exciting and there's, there's just no other game like it. So that's our first look at Rugby Sevens Worldwide. The stars, the fans, the fancy dress and the passion for a party. We'll be back in the new year where the Seven Series heads for the US whose team boasts the fastest man in rugby, Carlin Isles. Until then, it's goodbye from our team in Dubai.